next participants from from Peru had some difficulties joining us, but now I see that uh, Jordi Vilches, hello, have you? Yes, good morning. Good afternoon for you. Good morning here in Peru. Thank you. I hope you hear me well. Yes, yes, we do. We are we are we are kind of running out of time, but not. You, you will have time to give your presentation, and and if people have to leave, some of them will leave. But but you know, the floor is yours. And actually, very interesting topic topic. These alternative long term scenarios for for Peru. So go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much for the invitation and opportunity to participate in this conference. Uh, and now I'm going to present about this work that we do in Peru. I'm, uh, my name is Jordi Vilches. I'm the National Director of Foresight and Strategic Planning in, in my country. Uh, these uh, are scenarios uh, uh, that my institution, which is uh, the governing body of the National System of Strategic Planning, the official uh, governing body, and it's in charge of the formulation of the national vision and the long-term national strategic plan. Uh, the institution provides guidelines and technical documents to assure the coherence and consistency of the strategic planning at the national, regional, and uh, local level of government. Uh, at Foresight, uh, we develop strategic studies on trends, uh, risk, opportunities, scenarios, and potentialities. Um, now I'm going to uh, explain more about uh, this uh, study, uh, which uh, had the motivation to build long-term scenarios to explore and estimate the impact of trends and the future events like uh, race opportunities and, and other disruptive events. Uh, we expect that uh, it is, uh, this work is going to be useful for uh, perspective analysis and the formulation of policies and plans in the country. Uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this side, we can see um, a diagram of the different elements. Uh, this is just a schematic because I'm going to show uh, more about it in a few slides ahead. Well, as, as uh, we know, uh, scenarios are expression of sequence of events that illustrate a future situation. And uh, we are uh, concentrating on um, not only on possible and desirable scenarios, but also uh, focusing on the what happens uh, when there are some disruptive events and uh, what uh, are the outcomes of these uh, events to uh, the uh, desirable scenarios, how they change. And um, this analysis is important for uh, uh, decision making. So, uh, we are uh, using system dynamics to model and analyze the impact of future events on key dimensions. For example, we are uh, in this part making an impact analysis. We see trends impacts, risk impacts, and also opportunities impacts. Um, this is the model. Uh, we use system dynamics. It's based on Threshold 21, T21 model, which is uh, very known in the community, I think. And it has uh, this uh, main, uh, the colors represent uh, yeah, uh, main uh, modules as, uh, for example, this is the population and a demographics module. This is the economy module. Uh, and this is the, uh, the green one, the uh, environmental module. So uh, there's the, um, uh, more than modules, these are dimensions and each dimension has uh, thematic modules, 24 thematic modules. And the scope of this and more modeling is at the national level. Uh, the time horizon is 2050. And uh, we uh, received this model as a donation and collaboration with a local university here in Peru. And then we developed more elements about this uh, model, uh, uh, trying to adapt it better to the uh, reality of our country. So we are going to explain more a, a little bit. Uh, these are some of the scenarios we were uh, exploring and making uh, some um, guesses uh, about uh, the future. First, we have the normative scenario, uh, which is uh, uh, represents the realization of the vision of Peru by 2050. We uh, made a work to um, uh, prepare a, 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 at the national level a national accord which is the high level of policy in the country 
and uh, main actors uh, took the decision to uh, define a vision of the country to 2050. So uh, we modeled that scenario, and this is the first one that, uh, the, that our work uh, has uh, shown. Uh, the second one is a major disaster scenario. Here in Peru, there's a high probability of a seismic event, uh, the earthquake of 8.8, uh, and a tsunami in, in our country. It's a probability in the future, very high. So we model this scenario. Also, a global economic crisis and um, a recession after the uh, occurrence of the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, we are showing here more uh, out, outputs of the model. So we can see here the different hypotheses, the base and the hypothesis. Uh, we introduce inputs uh, in many variables to uh, model the, the scenarios and see the outcomes here. Yes, uh, a few snaps of, of the work. So this is the major scenario, and this is the global crisis. We can see the difference in the in different outcome variables. For example, uh, monetary poverty, formal employment, uh, GDP per capita, private investment. How they can uh, uh, they vary between these scenarios. Um, so other scenarios were the social crisis, uh, and uh, for example. What happens if there's a deep loss of confidence in the political system in our country? And we can see here the outcomes. Uh, the technological disruption as well. Uh, we model how the accelerated innovation and technological development could impact uh, our country. Uh, so there are some hypotheses uh, also in, let's say, a good uh, performance in terms of our country could invest uh, well in education and could uh, take advantage of the technology, but also if that doesn't happen, then what uh, uh, risk the technological disruption could uh, 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 make to our, uh, our economy, our social system. And finally, the environmental the scenario is about uh, what happens if there's a failure of implementing climate change measures and policies in the long run. Uh, so we, we have also here, uh, for example, greenhouse uh, uh, emissions. We, uh, as a country, try to make uh, uh, net uh, 2050, but uh, the basic scenario is the, uh, the trend. But others' uh, hypotheses are uh, what happens if mm, not only the trend continues, but it, uh, the situation aggravates. So, um, as conclusions, uh, the construction of alternative scenarios is based on the recognition of uh, driving forces, also called the rapid events, uh, which uh, this uh, provide uh, information to uh, to make studies and enhance the future possibilities uh, on the impact of the national development. Uh, we have used the T21 model as a base, but we have um, updated or modeled additional uh, variables to estimate the probable impacts of the events uh, and the scenarios that were modeled. And uh, uh, finally, we um, have uh, provided six uh, plausible long-term scenarios and the narrations uh, for Peru to the 2050. And the scenarios were the were shown a normative scenario, a major disaster, as an earthquake, a global economic crisis, social crisis, technological disruption, and environmental disruption. Uh, so uh, this is the work that we have done using um, uh, systems dynamics and uh, scenarios. Uh, thank you very much for, for your attention. Oh, that was a fast run. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. It's an interesting um, project and and kind of the challenges of these these models you you were showing us, and this kind of, the kind of constant updating of these models, particularly in the in the scenarios with strong drivers behind, like some kind of CO emissions and like that. So, so kind of uh, what did you find more important to have these scenarios to to help decision making, or was it more about the discussions and sharing and getting people to you know participate and like that or or was it both so kind of these learnings actually from the project 
Okay, thank you very much for the question. Uh, as you said, both of them are um, challenging and important. Uh, first, uh, construction of scenarios. Uh, we uh, review a lot of uh, literature, but also involve many experts and also uh, social actors to uh, make possible to uh, model the variables and discuss also the initial out outputs of the of the modeling. And uh, after that, we have. Uh, use these scenarios to uh, uh, provide a, a basis of uh, for the uh, national planning. Uh, these scenarios are taken uh, uh, for the strategic plan in Peru, the long-term plan, and uh, this uh, have made us possible to provide, for example, alternative uh, strategic measures for uh, important things like us the um, the uh, occurrence of a, a major disaster, which is a high probability event in our country. So with this information, we uh, make possible that actors um, uh, be more uh, empathized with a situation that could be uh, a probable, uh, probable in the future. <clears throat> Uh, actually, thank you. That's the uh, same. There's in the chat a, a kind of a comment and question that, that where you where there is said that um, decision makers of decision makers often seek prediction. So, how have you found your scenarios? Have they influenced the policy discussions in Peru? Okay. <clears throat> well, it, it's also challenging because in the country. Uh, we are at uh, uh, the government level that has some uh, some influence in the national decision taking process, but uh, this influence is not at the highest level possible in our uh, perspective. It should be at a more uh, a higher level. Uh, however, we try to make uh, some uh, more uh, <coughs> influence. Uh, through making this discussion public and uh, provide a, a insight to uh, the top level decision makers. Um, we, we try to make a, a debate of this at the highest level possible uh, of the policy level, which is the national accord uh, institution in our country that uh, has uh, the commitment to uh, to provide uh, state policies, uh, and we have been able to do so uh, in 2019 in the in the definition of the 2050 vision of the country, uh, and uh, we are now uh, in the next step of that process and the planning, uh, which is the approval of the uh, national plan of strategic development. Uh, uh, so uh, we are at the discussion. Uh, it is not uh, simple because we, we we need to 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 make more impact, but uh, we are in, in that process. It's often with policy makers because the periods of election is so short and like that. There's a nice comment. Would you, Mika, like to present it yourself? Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, well. Uh, I am uh, an engineer, uh, telecommunications engineer. I made an MBA here and in the Netherlands. Uh, well, uh, I'm the uh, foresight and strategy um, uh, studies uh, national director. And my institution is the National Center for Strategic Planning in Peru. Uh, well, my interest in foresight uh, has come like 10 years ago when I uh, started to work in my institution. And since then, I've made a career in the public sector. Uh, and as I told, I'm national director now, and also I've been uh, executive director of my institution um, uh, as an acting role. Uh, but well, now I'm uh, doing this, and all the interests uh, that I have are uh, artificial intelligence and also uh, computer uh, science. Uh, I do research uh, at that as well. And, uh, and that are my academic interests that I'm pursuing to uh, make a PhD in the uh, coming future. Okay, then there's this, this kind of comment. To what extent did you use Monte Carlo methods or was your focus more on closed form modeling? What programming environments did you use or was it more spreadsheet based? <laughs> so kind of in the chat, so 
Ah, okay. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I uh, we are uh, more in the uh, closed form modeling, uh, but uh, we have used the system dynamics. Um, well, in, in that uh, technique, we uh, uh, have many variables and we uh, relate them and also uh, analyze the feedbacks and use uh, literature to provide um, uh, more uh, uh, provide a relation between the variables and also extract some uh, relations uh, of the statistics and well, all, all that uh, comes to the model. And uh, as you know, those uh, calculations are um, forecasted, uh, forecasted, but the dynamic functions in the model to uh, provide feedback between not also variables in the models, but also intermodules. And well, we try to, to reach equilibrium, but also see the trends. The long term, long -term trends are, are the main outcomes of the, of the model. Okay, are there any more comments or questions? Is there any way to perform validation of the models taking into account they go into the unknown? <laughs> so not extrapolating, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, first uh, we try to, uh, to provide some validation, but backwards uh, in terms of provide some input uh, uh, for previous years and then see how they perform in the, in the I, I say future, but actually there, there are uh, also years in the past and see if the, the trends uh, are consistent with the uh, real uh, outcome uh, in, in the variables and we see in statistics. Uh, that is a, a, a one level of uh, consistency that we try, but obviously in the future, we cannot uh, say that as we also are providing scenarios, possibilities that uh, could happen. So uh, our educated guesses, but based on uh, uh, well-modeled uh, uh, system uh, that has been uh, validated as a consistency with previous uh, behavior. Thank you. If there are no more comments. So uh, happy that you could join us. We were kind of wait, waiting for your participation. So uh, 